Hello everybody, I'm Danger Gen Vex and welcome back to Really Random. This week, our random words were Hollywood, Cats, and Coal. Which, by the way, I'm very, very glad you didn't choose. From these words, our trusty random blog topic generator kicked out these options. And from these options, you guys selected on Twitter via vote the following winner. Just so we're all on the same page, this is the history of Hollywood, the place, not Hollywood's film industry. However, because uh, the film industry is so closely tied to Hollywood's development as a place, there will be some mention of, well, there probably will be quite a bit of mention of film in this little description of Hollywood's history. And that is because a lot of Hollywood's growth all centered around the growth of the film industry in that specific location. But again, just to be absolutely clear, this is not a history of film because that is extensive. This is the history of Hollywood. Now it all started around 1886 when a man with the name H.J. Whitley decided that he loved uh, what was to become Hollywood, the, the territory, and he wanted to buy a ranch there. And he wanted to name this ranch Hollywood. Now that is like the wood holly, by the way. <laughs> Um, and when he bought his ranch, he told the original owner of the ranch that he'd intended to develop a community there. Now, the original owner, being a bit of a gossip, told his wife, who told just about everybody else, and the news spread across the different ranch owners, including to one fellow named Harvey Wilcox, via his wife, who was also a bit of a go gossip, Deirdre. Uh, no, sorry, Deirdre. Deida. It's a very tricky name though. Deida. So, or Deida? I don't know. Deida Deida, this lovely lady, also told her husband of the name Hollywood. Now, Harvey Wilcox was a bit of a sneaky man, but he was also a real estate man and he wanted in on the action. So, in 1887, he headed off to the L LA County Records Office and filed a deed with the name Hollywood on it for the property he owned mainly because he wanted to be the first person to record the name on a deed. He probably also did it because he wanted his name forever linked to Hollywood, which it often is, uh, but mistakenly so. The property now owned, a small community started to, ve to develop in this newly crowned or christened Hollywood. And in 1890, the first hotel, the Glen Holly, opened up in this new Hollywood neighborhood or Hollywood community. By the 1900s, this small Hollywood community had grown that it had its own post office, hotel, newspaper, two markets, and a population of over 100,000 people. It was uh, 102,479, exactly, I believe. But it was still mostly ranches and vineyards and orchards and groves and that sort of thing. It was farmland and nowhere near the kind of Hollywood that we're familiar with today. In 1902, the Hollywood Hotel opened and it's this hotel that would, in the future, become something of a hotspot for the stars. In 1903, Hollywood was officially incorporated as Hollywood, but most of the people who lived there were conservatives and for one the community was prohibitionist so the only place that alcohol could be bought was in a pharmacy and only for medicinal purposes not even hotels and restaurants were allowed to serve wine which was pretty common back then with their meals for another thing it would be almost well, it would be over 10 years, I believe, before they would see their first feature length film. Now, in 1910, to benefit from Los Angeles's water and sewage, Hollywood became an official part of LA. This was a very good thing because the people of Hollywood being conservative had banned movie theaters and film theaters. 
but Los Angeles didn't have any such rules. And now that Hollywood was part of it, things were going to get really, really interesting. This is where we get to the point where we realize who we actually have to thank for the boom of film industry in Hollywood. None other than Tom Edison, the biggest arsehole in the world himself. You see, Edison held a lot of patents that was for equipment and things used in the making of film. And if he hadn't been such an ass back on the East Coast, filmmakers would have remained there in Hollywood and you know, in, in New York and made their films there. But him having a stick up his ass, they often, or the, the filmmakers were often given problems and trouble for making films on that side. However, the influence didn't reach all the way to the West Coast. So a lot of filmmakers packed their bags and headed out west. And where did they end up? Well, LA and Hollywood. Now it's 1911 and one of these filmmakers who decided to toddle off to the west coast is a man named David Horsley. He bought the Blondu Tavern on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood and turned it into the Nestor Film Company. Um, its original name was the Nestor Motion Picture motion picture company the Nesta motion picture company and it was there that some of the first Hollywood films were produced in 1912 however this Nesta film company merged with its parent Universal and I think they continued making movies under the Nesta banner until about 1917 in 1914, the first feature-length film was released, named Squaw Man, and this film was made by Cecil B. DeMille, um, Samuel Goldwyn, and Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Lesky. Now, if some of these names sound familiar, yes, Samuel Goldwyn did play kind of a part in Goldwyn Pictures, but when it became Goldwyn, uh, Goldwyn Meyer. Metro Goldwyn Meyer. Metro Goldwyn Meyer, he was no longer a part of it. It was bought out. And Cecil B. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille was credited or is credited as one of the founding fathers of the American film industry. So with these guys, these big names um, now starting to do their work in Hollywood, things were kind of starting to develop. Interestingly, they made this feature-length film in a barn that was about a block away from what is now hot, the corner of Hollywood and Vine. In 1917, the Charlie Chaplin Film Studios uh, were built on uh, the, the south of Sunset, just south of Sunset Boulevard, actually. And that's the Charlie Chaplin, by the way. The funny short guy with the weird pants and the coattails, the bowler hat, the cane, and the really weird moustache. Yeah, that's the one. By the 1920s, Hollywood was considered to be the fifth largest in the film industry. And in 1923, the Hollywood sign went up. But back then it said Hollywood Land, and it was really just an advert for housing development. And like any advert, when it finished, it run, finished its run, it was just left there to rot because nobody really cared. Now, in 1927, the film industry really started to pick up in Hollywood. On May 18th, Grauman's Chinese Theatre finally opened its doors, and or it held its grand opening. And it celebrated this opening by showing a premiere of Cecil DeMille's uh, King of Kings. And they caused a bloody riot in the process because everybody who's anybody showed up and the poor locals didn't know what to do so they tumbled over each other caused riots and ran amok trying to catch a glimpse of these rich and famous stars the next day the 19th of may grandma's chinese theater opened its doors to the general public it's 1929 now and things are really picking up speed so much so that the first ever academy award is held in the blossom room of the hollywood hotel 
Now, not only is this entire thing small enough to fit into a single room instead of a giant theater, but it's banquet seating. These guys sat around very elaborately made up tables, eating and drinking and having fun while the Academy Awards were being handed out. Fast forward 20 years to 1949. The last 20 years, Hollywood hit a bit of a dry spell, what with World War II and people not really being into the film industry so much anymore. Everybody was too worried about the war and, you know, watching smaller wartime films that were shown in specific theatres rather than going to the movies. But it's 1949, the war is over and Hollywood is ready to get back to business to celebrate this new refresher in the film industry. Hollywood fixes, or the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce fixes the Hollywood sign. They lose the land and add a little pizzazz. And finally, the big sign looks a bit like what we see today. In 1956, the very recognizable Capitol Records building goes up on Vine Street. And in 1958, the Hollywood Walk of Fame is created, but it isn't officially inaugurated or officially open until 1960, when the very first star is placed in the Walk of Fame. This star is for the lovely Joanne Woodard. It's 1968 and Hollywood is in full Tinseltown mode. The original founders and community residents are no doubt turning in their graves as Grauman's Chinese Theatre is made an historical and cultural landmark. Now in the 1980s, Hollywood started to suffer a bit of a decline and a lot of the older culturally historic buildings or culturally significant buildings were at risk of being demolished. But never fear, the people to the rescue. The old Art Deco CBS headquarters were taken over by MTV, Comedy Central, RET and Spike TV as they consolidated themselves into having that building as a single headquarters and thus saving it. In 1985, the Hollywood District was finally listed in the National Register as an historic place. Fast forward a bit more and it's 2017. Hollywood is still the filmmaking hotspot in America. A tourist attraction, a home for the stars, the walk of fame and the place we know and love today. And there you have it, the history of Hollywood. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I found it pretty entertaining. Um, I also found that there were a lot of misconceptions about how Hollywood got its start. I had to look into several different um, resources to find out who actually had the, or wanted to start Hollywood. But it, it was interesting research and I hope that you guys actually enjoyed hearing a little bit about Hollywood and Hollywood's history and how it's grown from humble beginnings as a conservative ranch community to today. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave me a like down below and leave me words for next week's episode. But thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!